particularly Asian. I put on my frame glasses and um, I also have a candy pigtail. <laughs> um, cannot get more Asian than that, I guess. And I want to talk to you guys about race and racism and how we should get rid of them. So I've been living in America for 10 years and that means that I went from just a visitor to going to school here and, and started working and paying tax and, and being basically in the system. So um, I would say that America to me has, the idea of America to me has also evolved from an ideology concept to real to my reality and that two are very different things <laughs> for example um, I was striving to come to America because I've always imagined America to be this very open um, open free society where Everyone speaks different language and have like wild range of different kind of friends and 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 eat store different food all the time and 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 that and that was how I thought America was and of course there's also like uh, American movies it's so um, broadcast internationally um, we all watch American movie and, and we all learn about um, America's culture of our American dream this this American dream idea and um, but coming to live in this system um, um, not to diss anything but I think uh, everybody is not perfect so no country is perfect. Think about that. Um, and um, and I would say that um, um, <laughs> when you're immigrant, um, when you're immigrant, paper really meant so much. Social security number and ID card, you need that to be able to work, to be able to be someone in this country. If you don't have that, you're not even a person. You're really a ghost. Alien is kind of idealized of a word, alien from the sky to, in another universe. But when you're a ghost in a human society, you literally no not exist. No matter how hard you dream, how hard you work, your being is not even validated and that's painful and and that is something that i don't think anyone um anyone not experience it can say that they really understand or maybe you can um imagine you 
maybe as American, you go live somewhere else and you can live in Europe where, you know, majority people can still look like your skin color and look similar like your relatives, but try live in Africa or in Asia where somewhere you will really feel like the odd one. And then, then internalize if you feel welcome or you feel being stared at or or you don't even know the language so you don't even know where to begin that feeling and um, uh, I would say that uh, <laughs> if anything I come to America to be to become American, to become this ideology of America that I, I dream of becoming. I didn't think that I would become an Asian. Taiwan, where I was born and raised, because everybody was Taiwanese, so there was no concept of I am Taiwanese, I need to advocate this. And, and we don't call ourselves Asian, because Asian is so such a broad terminology, nobody say that. Nobody say that. <laughs> you either say, I'm Taiwanese, I'm Japanese, I'm Korean, I'm from Thailand, I'm Thai. Which Thai and Taiwanese are always confused for some reason. Uh, here in America, I would tell people that I'm Taiwanese and then they would tell me that they love Thai food. I'm like, that's two different things. Thailand is Southeast Asia and Taiwan, it's its own island. <laughs> so I, the more and more American I know, um, I do feel like some people, some American, they do have very narrow view of the world. And that I learned from, um, in America, you don't, teach world history as much you teach about America history and America compared to a lot of other countries in the world America is very young please consider that America is 300 years old China India over thousands of thousands of years so Actually, India has more longer than that, I think. China has 5,000 years. And Egyptian, their culture was also ruined. They don't speak Egyptian, they speak Arabic. Um, anyway, not to get too complicated of the, um, of, from the topic right now. Um, I didn't think that I would become an Asian in America. And um, <laughs> it's, it's just that I just want people to take me as a person. I just want people to take me as, as, as a person without skin color, without race, without ethnic, without the shape of my face or the shape of my eyes and, and, um, and, and meeting some of the American American Chinese people or American Vietnamese people um, they all are still striving to to learn about their own identity in this country and and for a long time America is called the melting pot but the melting pot means that everybody is really ingrained and and, and really um, uh, really connected, interconnected and intertwined so hard that, that there's no more differences. So I think my experience of America is actually not a melting pot. It's more like a salad bowl. 
this is the green this is a blue cheese this is a cheese this is the bacon and and um this is avocado everybody had their own little stands and their own little circle but it's not a melting pot we're working towards it hopefully um because after all america is still so great because it because american dream stands for um stands for this great ideology that, that everybody can work hard and become something and 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 make something meaningful out of their lives and then contribute to the world and make the world a better place I didn't think that I would become an Asian and then and that how people would perceive me would always be an Asian and when I act outside of being an Asian then people get shocked <sighs> I love taking photos I love taking photos of everything not just food and <sighs> I didn't dye my hair this color because I want to look like anime. I just dye my hair because I want to. And I'm wearing this frame because I just love making myself look a little bit different. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not, and I, and I was not a bookworm in school. I was good in literature, history, but I was terrible at math. And I hate studying. I was a rebellion. I did not fit into this Asian stereotype in America. But over and over again, I find myself have to explain myself over my own differences. And, and if somebody never had the interest to come and talk to me in person, they would never know who I really am. They would just take this face value into heart and, oh, here goes another. <sighs> and it's very narrow-minded. Because if you're going to do that, if you're going to judge someone based on, this, based on their own skin color, you're going to miss out so much so much differences that you can learn from them and you or if you only are able to um be in something be in this group group of friends group of circles of friends that, that you're only comfortable with you will only be able to achieve this much because they also say that you are average of five person that you're closest to and think about that. <laughs> um, and Asian is also considered minority in America. Which is funny. Minority or the supremacy, this concept. Um, not gonna go very politics, but I think I think capitalism and socialism should, should 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 just marry each other and then and become somewhere in the middle because the middle is what we need. We don't need strain um, monetizations over everything, and we need to take care of the people that are at the bottom because middle class is getting is this it's going to disappear. You're either climbing up the ladder to the one percent. Or 10% or you're going to become low class lower income class so I do think that we need much more compassion now more so than ever than holding on to our old ideology where we look at people we judge people based on their skin color also say that it's also perspective is really really perspective like 
I was not happy being a Taiwanese living in Taiwan. I was always the odd one. And so in Taiwan, because I am that girl that is different and I don't care about the beauty standard, I don't care about skin, um, about be skinny, bony, and I don't care about being pale. And in the summertime, you will find me being the first one to take off my clothes and being on a bikini and just run to the beach. And I will be 10 in one day. And, and, and it used to be a joke, but my friends would laugh at me that um, I look more like Malaysian, Indonesian, Asian because they are have they have skin they have darker skin color and they you know in, in Thailand they still produce a lot of rice and 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 you know they just they just hard worker their their skin color is a little darker cuz they're closer to the beach and and they work outside all the time so my friend would laugh at me that I look more Indonesian than Taiwanese like like how like I'm a sub-Asian? Is there such a thing as a sub-Asian? <laughs> and I have to tell you that me personally, I have had, have had changed my perception of the world as well. Because in, in New York, a lot of the Mexican I know, they are, you know, they work in the restaurant, they're all like short and they talk loud and, and, and they're darker skin. But then when I went to acting school, I had this Mexican friend who is white, who is very white, who looks more like, more like a Portuguese or Spanish than he is a Mexican. And I visited him in, in Guadalajara and he told me about the histories of Mexico and then how how there are different types of Mexican that are um, mixing with the indige indigenous people, or there are there are some there are some people who have lighter skin color because their 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 ancestry probably mixed way earlier with the Spanish um, colonization. So my thought about Mexican change, I'm like. Wow, if I only think Mexican as the restaurant worker who are short and who are dark skin color, like, what does that make me? That makes me just an ignorant asshole to think that all Mexican look like that and then no Mexican can look beyond that. And so I changed my mindset and, and, and I learned, I learned something and, and, and it's cool, <laughs> right? Um, and um, I have another experience of being dim being discriminated against in America. Actually, not by a white person. <laughs> it's actually by a mixed race person. Um, I know this acquaintance uh, from a friend of mine. It's just we're all artists, so we we uh, we network and and then um, and we collaborate and and you know we do things, we make things, we create together. So. Um, I met her a couple of times, and then um, and through through a mutual uh, through a mutual friends party, we we saw each other again, and then she invited me to her show, to her art show, which I was like, yes, of course I will come. Um, now I want to tell you a little brief history about her. She is half Korean, half black. And um, so she, in America, she would be in both minority. <laughs> she would be in the population of both minority. 
and um, so when she has her art show, she used identity politics. She basically was more leaning on her black side. Her show was very much about hair, black hair, black woman's hair fashion, and and their their own hair culture. And I was very excited. I never get my hair. Um, well, I have get my hair braided, but it's for a really, really long time. So I was just very, very excited to see um, what she would do to my hair. And I invited a girlfriend of mine to come along with um, who is white. So we got there. We're probably the first, the first 10 person that were there and there were a sheet of um, you basically fill in the number and and then you just waited to be called for your hair salon appointment like and um, and me and my girlfriend we just sat there we got our drinks and and then we're just keeping each other company and then we have you know we just talk for hours without really realizing that um wait how come we're still waiting there are more people that come in and then came after us, but they all went before us. And that's when my girlfriend pointed out that um, we're the odd one here. <laughs> that I'm being the only Asian and she being the only white. We are the odd one in the room. And I looked around and all of a sudden I just like, I feel kind of yucky. All of a sudden it was supposed to be about learning other people's culture and be open and, 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 and all of a sudden is this kind of, is this kind of, <laughs> um, bullying, silent bullying, just standoff making you wait but um but we're not gonna tell you that that actually you're less important ah hmm. <laughs> uh, it was so disappointed i feel very very bad um not so much bad for myself but i feel bad to drag my other girlfriend into this whatever this is it's an art show it's about learning you want to advocate your culture that's great but don't make other people feel like shit and it, and and you know don't be exclusive that's what i'm saying anyway i i distanced myself from her um completely and and I was kind of upset that there were so many signs about her in that kind of tendency that I didn't acknowledge that I failed to pick it up because because um even on Facebook and and her Instagram she's often um she's using it very well to her advantage. The cultural appropriation, that is her gun. That is her gun to um, to take back the authenticity of her own people. And uh, she's very young. She's like 24. So, um, 24, how can you have so much hatred? You can read the news, you can learn about O.J. Simpson, you can learn about Civil War, you can learn about Black Activist Movement, Black Panther. You can learn about the thing that your people have suffered. But I don't think she suffered herself of all those experiences. But she's holding on to this hatred and making her art and have this voice of our people has been looked down upon all these centuries and we have to be proud of ourselves now and we have to take it back. <laughs> Tell 
take what back? This kind of revengeful thinking of race, it's not going to help equality. It's definitely not going to help people to become more enamored with each other. If anything, you're doing the total opposite. And that is very sad. As an artist, I think your responsibility is bigger than that. Ooh. And I want to tell you that my parents are um, a very traditional. Um, they're very Taiwanese. They don't have white friend or black friend. So their idea of black people or white people, they're all foreigner, as we call it. And, um, and when I was dating a, a black person, my mom has literally got so angry at me. How could you? They're a criminal. I was livid. I was livid. I'm like, how can you say that? Just like, that is such an ignorant thing to say or to think that, okay, this person's black, he has to be criminal. Where the fuck does that come from? The news and ignorance. That's all. I yell back at her and like, black people are people too. Stop calling them black ghosts. So I don't buy into that. I come from my mom. She may be racist, but I'm not. You have to believe it can change. And you have to be the change. I know by me making this video is taking a stand. And maybe I will be crucified based on speaking up. But I have to say it. I have to know that, I have to know that at least I was not like them. And I would not act like them. Every race has its own unspoken history. Black people has slavery and, and, and in the early century during the war, Japanese Americans were put in conversion camp, some kind of concentration camp where, where, where they were not allowed to have their own possessions and culture. And earlier Asian immigrants in America, they were only allowed to be in two business, which is laundromat and nail salon. It's that which is why all of those laundromat and hair salon, nail salon, they were a lot owned by Asian people still. That is due to policy. That is not due to Asian people love nails. <laughs> I mean, of course, Japanese people have like really, really beautiful nail cultures and all that, but. <sighs> but that was made from the policy in here. That is not a general stereotype thing that you can stereotype people off. Anyway, I think it's great. I think it's great when we see just a position. Like I was contacted by this German girl who, who was going to visit New York, but who lived in Japan for years. And she, she made this very uh, vibrant color sequence kind of kimono. And, and the other day I saw these black kids, these two, three black kids in the subway, they were playing Beatles. And, and, and I love 
curly hair. I love big afro curly hair and I'm so in love with this um, with this hair texture right now who which is very unlike my natural black oily thick hair where it just goes completely completely straight iron flat straight when I have long hair I love this hair texture like straw it's so fun <laughs> And I can do so much with it. I love it. Um, and that's all I'm saying. It's our diversity that is rich and beautiful. It's not, it's not our one thing that made us. You need to be proud of yourself. I, I, I get that. But you also need to be open and accepting and 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 if you don't know something just ask just learn just know better know more that's all I'm saying the only way we can close our discrimination or, or, or past hatred is by being more understanding, more compassion, and we need more conversation to break down those barriers. This is Kasha Zhu, um, and I will see you next time. If you like my content, please feel free to subscribe.